what's up YouTube so today I actually just got in a shipment from coldhose.com and what they do is they sell universal fittings and hoses if you're gonna adapt air conditioning to your car so this is for the 68 Hemi swap charger so just open the box see what we got here get everything out we got some fittings we got some line looks like that's a number eight line a number six line right there and this is a half inch line with number 10 and if you notice <clears throat> I went and had them crimp the ends right here that go to the firewall. This is what the factory end looked like from the 68 firewall lines. And I had to get something a little different. So we're gonna go start fitting this on. You see it comes with the O-rings and everything. This is gonna go in. Get all this out of the way. So we got our hose and the end. Here, this goes to the expansion valve side, but it's a right angle as well. So that one, and this one, are gonna go to the firewall. And then I've got extra hose here that's gonna go from the condenser to the compressor. They actually welded on these AN adapter fittings. So now I can actually attach this back onto the car, tighten it down and hook the hoses to it and then put the fittings on here. These are the fittings, get the fittings lined up with the hose, get my hose the length I want and cut it and have a custom hose made. And these are the other fittings. So you see where they welded the A&N type of fitting onto it, which looks fantastic. So now the only thing I don't have are these little gaskets that the factory had. I need to go get some of those at O'Reilly's. And that way when I put everything on, that'll have a good seal here sure where we last left off but I had gotten my parts in for the air conditioning and I started mocking things up and the fittings they sent me were wrong so I had to send those back and get a set of right angle fittings and a 45 degree fitting so I can make it fit the way I wanted at the same time the way the factory hoses connect I need to get new o-rings and these like little metal gaskets here so this is the part number it's a 26814 and it's from Rapid Seal. So, I've got those, and I'm getting ready to start putting all my fittings together. Just to give you an idea, here's the factory fitting. I'll change that O-ring and put the metal piece on here. All right, a little trick to putting these on. Uh, first thing you wanna do is take the O-ring off so you can get the old metal gasket off. Just a little pick, you can pick the rubber out. For spray carburetor cleaner, brake cleaner, clean it up so there's no oily residue there. And then what I do, put this down, uh, you have your assortment laid out here of different fittings. It's gonna be the small fitting, like this. And it goes on with the impressed side out, okay? So when you go to put it on, it actually doesn't just snap into place. So what I do is I take a deep well socket, in this case it's a 13 millimeter, and it just fits out around the outside opening like this. And then you can just kind of wiggle it and push it down. Like that. And it snaps it right into place. It doesn't hurt the gasket. So once you get it lined up where your bolt goes through, you press this all the way down like that. And always go around the edge a little bit just to make sure it's nice and flush. And then there's little tabs right here that hold the captive bolt in place. You just take a screwdriver like so push that down in there and there you go now your metal gasket is on and it's not distorted it's on there properly so now we just need to get an o-ring so this is the old o-ring that came off so I've got this assortment down here so I'll just grab what looks to be something close because I'm pretty sure all these are too big and they are so the next one there would be this one so we'll Put it on and then we look like that and then here's the other ones that I did so 
that I've got these done. I've got one more to do. And then these fittings will be perfect, ready to go on the car. You can see here where they welded these uh, other fittings on here for my standard line hose fitting. All right, so I've started mocking up my hoses and figuring out the lengths I need and where I need my adapter and fittings to be. So because you want your hose to kind of curl in the right direction so you're not fighting it, the best thing to do is lay it out on the car, put your fittings in place, get a piece of tape, and then take a marker of some sort and mark a line from the hose to the fitting. I also add it on my tape here and I do it in sequence like A, B, C. And so what I'm doing is uh, when I go to get these crimped, see how that's off? They'll just twist it like this and line that up. And then when they crimp it, it's actually gonna have the fitting sitting where I want it. So instead of it all jacked around like this, it's gonna be sitting like this. So uh, these are the lines. This is my pressure switch, which actually would go to a little um, two wire switch that I've got which screws onto here, which will go between the compressor and the 12 volt signal. So if the pressure's ever wrong, it'll turn off power to the compressor. This is the high side service port, and this is the low side service port. <clears throat> and then this is the line that goes from the evaporator back to the condenser. So I've got various fittings. That's a size number six. This is a size number eight, and that's a size number 10. So all I have to do now that I've got the lines kind of mocked up and the fittings I need, I need to find somebody that can crimp the lines for me. So uh, you could have bought a crimper for $250 because I'm only going to use this one time, which is to do these lines. I have no reason to do air conditioned lines on any of these cars because they all have air conditioning and work fine. Um, I'm just going to find a shop that can crimp them for me and I pay them just to crimp them. Once they're crimped, I can come back, put them on the car, put my vacuum, uh, what do you call it, motor on it, and pull a vacuum on it for a couple hours because it has been open exposed for a while. Uh, once it's all vacuumed out and I make sure there's no leaks, that can start feeding in the Freon. This car takes uh, 26 ounces of Freon and six and a half ounces of oil. So because this system had been used, there's probably some residual oil in the condenser and in the compressor and probably in my evaporator. Um, this type of system takes PAG 46 oil. So I'm gonna put three ounces of oil in it and then put the 26 ounces of Freon in it. And hopefully that's all it's gonna need and I should have air conditioning. Let's hope so. It's been uh, high 90s here for the last couple of days. So it would be nice to be able to drive the car and have the air conditioning running. Uh, previously, it did have air conditioning from the factory to 318, and it worked really well. Um, I just couldn't use any of that stuff with this new motor because the Hemi, the air conditioning is uh, lower mount of the compressors down here on the bottom. On the 318, it was up here, and it was different lines and condensers and configurations. And to be honest with you, some of that stuff looked original. And, you know, after 54 years, do you really trust that stuff? And it was really designed for R12, not R134. So hence the new hoses and new fittings and everything. Um, I do have the newer style condenser and dryer. The dryer on this car is actually mounted right here on the side of condenser. I just painted it black. Um, and this has been flushed out and cleaned uh, at the 06 charger. Now the 06 charger air conditioner worked beautifully. So there's nothing wrong with that compressor or the condenser. Um, so we should be good to go. But I'll keep you updated as soon as I get these cramped and get them back on the car and show you that process of pulling a vacuum, putting Freon in it. And hopefully the charger will be back with air condition. Roll that beautiful crimp footage. Look at that. Isn't that nice? All crimped and ready to go. They said it was good that I came in and had this oriented and marked. That really helps them. They said a lot of customers don't do that. So now I'm going to put the lines on the car and start the process of pulling a vacuum and putting Freon in it. All right, I started the pump at 2.30. It is now 4.30, so the pump ran for two hours, 
and I've turned the pump off. What you do is before you turn off, you have these valves open as it's pulling vacuum. Then you close both of these off and then you turn your vacuum pump off. And what I'm doing now is I'm just verifying that the gauges are not moving high or low side. And as long as they don't move from where they are, it means I don't have any leaks in the system. So once I verify there's no leaks, I'll go ahead and take this off like this and I'll get my pump out of the way. And then I'm gonna start by doing an oil charge, which I have this, and this is three ounces. And as I told you, because this system does have oil in it, I'm just gonna add three ounces to it. It's a six and a half ounce system. So we're gonna add three ounces just because we're changing. All the lines are new and all that. And then I've got Freon here. I've got 12 ounces in this can. I've actually got 18 ounces in this can. Now, the system only needs 26 ounces. So what I'm gonna do is use the 18 ounce can and I'm gonna weigh the other can because all we really need to get eight ounces out of it. I don't need the full 12. So I'm gonna start working on that. While this thing's holding the vacuum, I'll make sure it's not gonna leak. I wanna show you here. Um, this is my inline switch, which I have to wire. And here's the wires and basically the hot wire that comes down and goes to the compressor i'm going to cut it and i'm going to splice in this so what's going to happen is when it gets to the right pressure this will close and it'll let contact go down to the compressor and open the compressor so i'm going to wire this up real quick again the switch is kind of hidden right here and that's going to be my pressure switch as i was showing you before uh, this is my high side service port down here and this is my low side service port there so I'm doing here, this is the wire to the compressor. I unplugged it so I've got room to work. And there's two wires in here. There's a black and a blue. And I just basically uh, cut and pulled back this rubber outer sleeve so I can get to it. So I'm gonna cut this blue wire here. And when I cut it, I'll attach one of each end to my connection, which is right here going to the switch. I'll put those in, solder them, tape them up, cover this back up and then the wires will come off of here and go to the switch which is right there and then this goes down to the actual compressor okay it's been right at 25 minutes you can see my pressures have not changed a bit it's still holding the vacuum exactly where it was before I have now wired in my switch which is right down there and put on my air filter and all I even tied my wires up out of the way there we can see it so they're tied up so they don't be close because the serpentine belt's really close right here. Right there. So I want to make sure the wires don't get caught. Put the air filter on. And now, what I'm ready to do is start loading the first can in. And what this is, again, this is the oil charge. And so what you do, you shake it up really good. Then you open up the valve here, and it's gonna go to here. And before we turn this on so it can suck it into the car, we wanna make sure we purge right here. We'll purge out any air, and as soon as we start seeing some Freon oil start to come out, we know this line is purged. There's no air we're gonna introduce into the system. So you always keep your high side closed. You don't touch that anymore. And once we get this purged, then we'll open the low side and suck that first can of Freon into it. From there, we can start adding the other Freon where I'll crank the car, turn on the compressor, let it run as I'm starting to fill it. But this is how I like to do it. I always like to get my oil in first. kicked on you can see that down there and 
when I started putting pressure, I had a slight leak right here at this top fitting. I guess I never cranked it down real tight. So it's tight now, no more leaks. You see we're getting the Freon in here. This can's about empty now. See where my pressures are. The high side's getting over about 160, 170. The low side's about 40. So we'll keep uh, shaking this to empty the can out. Once it's empty, that'll be 18 ounces of Freon in it. And then we'll start adding in the additional eight uh, ounces that I need. I should probably get my temperature gauge and put it in the car and see what the temperature's getting out to. All right, after 18 ounces of Freon, we're sitting about 30 on the low side and about 205, 210 on the high side. So the high side should be whatever ambient is times two plus 50. So if it's 90 degrees, that's 180, plus 50 is about 230. So, Show you how it's cooling down here. Let's take our little thermo gauge here. So a little bit more Freon, and we should be even further below. Like I say, we're about 43 degrees, which is pretty good, 42. So it's definitely coming down. So add a little bit of Freon get the levels where they're supposed to be and we should be good to go. So again, I gotta have 26 ounces total in it. Uh, right now I have 18 ounces in it. The low side is looking about 35. If you look right here, about between 30 and 35 on the low side. So, the breasts are still running. And you'll notice my electric fan's turned off because I don't have it wired to the compressor where you turn on the air, you're supposed to turn on the fan. I don't have that wired yet. As soon as the fans went off, see how much higher our pressure goes? This is why it's imperative to have the fan turn on with your air conditioning because the condenser gets really hot. Until the fans start pulling air across it, the high side pressure gets really high. So now I've got to go back in. I do have a box that runs my fans and I've just got to take that 12 volt signal and when I energize it, it goes down to the fans. Then it's going to turn the fan on whenever the air, con air condition's on and that'll make sure that we stay where we need to be. Just like I thought, go to the middle vents. The middle vents are always gonna be cooler than the ones farthest away. And I want you to look at this. We got 29 degrees, 28 degrees coming out the center vent. Oh wow, 27, look at that. Crazy, right? That's crazy. Let's just say if this thing is not accurate, that's still high 20s coming out of this thing. That's awesome. All right, and then we'll turn it off. It's off, now we'll turn off the car. Good to go. All right, so this is the controller I have. It's called the Dakota Digital Pack 2800 BT. And as you can see right here, the fourth connection over says AC plus, that means you trigger it 12 volt right here. And when you trigger 12 volt, it actually will turn on the fans. So what I have to do now is go into my car, take a wire, go down to this box and hook that up and we should be good to go. And check it out. <clears throat> I pulled it down so you can see my box here. And in the harness that I have, there's actually the blue wires right here in this bundle. So I pulled and tapped that. As I tapped it, I put it down here to the AC portion. And now, with the key on, we'll turn on the AC, and let's go see if the fans are working. Yep, both fans are actually running right now. So, just to make sure that works, let's turn the AC off, pushing that. And you can see the fans are stopping. Perfect. The cables are a little bit different, my hoses. So this one comes out, it's so close to the intake, I had to move it this way and it goes up and over the heater hoses, down and attaches here. This is my service port, runs behind the fans, then down to the compressor. This one comes out of the evaporator, runs over here by the motor and down. Instead of just hanging down, I figured I'd do it this to make it kind of neat and uniform, but try to minimize the amount of hoses you see.
take it. <laughs> it feels good, like it's blowing on me. It feels good. fix that one wheel pill soon enough. 